All rise. I've asked Captain Lance Royer to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance this morning. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the May 5th, 2014 meeting of the Shawnee County Board of Commissioners. My name is Bob Archer. I currently represent uh, District 3 and serve as chair of the commission alongside Commissioner Kevin Cook, who represents District 2, and Commissioner Shelley Bueller, who represents District 1. And it is Cinco de Mayo, and good morning. First item, please. Good morning. Proclamations, presentations, number one, presentation regarding road and bridge projects funded by the current half-cent sales tax. Good morning, Commissioners. Tom Walker, Public Works and Solid Waste. Um, I will here today to give a <coughs> quick presentation um, regarding the current sales tax and all the accomplishments <coughs> that have been made uh, primarily from a road and bridge uh, infrastructure uh, standpoint just so that people are aware of really what we've all been doing these past about 10 years now and with a couple of years um, yet to go. <coughs> first thing, what, what, you know, what are the things that we have accomplished? Well, one of the first things we've done is we've replaced several failing bridges uh, throughout the county. Um, this graph here shows you know, the, the tax started back in 2004 and it was a, uh, initially it had been a quarter cent sales tax prior to 2004. In 2004 it was, it was extended in the 12 years and then increased to a half cent sales tax. So since it has become a half cent sales tax, this <coughs> graph here uh, shows in the blue and red dots, the blue dots are all the bridges that have been um, replaced or improved from 2005 through this year. There's 48 of them a total of uh, $15,525,000. And then yet to come um, in 2015 and 2016, we are anticipating that we will replace eight more at a cost of $2,475,000. Now, one of the things to keep in mind also is in addition to the bridges that have been replaced, we've also, as part of the um, current sales tax program, we have included the design for the Carl Northwest Carlson Road Bridge over the Kansas River, or also known as the Willard Bridge. Willard bridge. Um, no construction dollars have been identified for that bridge, but the design is being paid for as part of this current sales tax. And prior to this sales tax, as I, as I mentioned, there was the quarter cent sales tax that had been put in place before this. With that uh, sales tax, uh, we had replaced an additional 32 bridges um, as part of this, the sales tax program. So it's quite a bit of quite a bit of work in the, uh, has been accomplished as part of the sales tax as far as bridges being replaced in unincorporated areas of Shawnee County. Also, what we've we done, we've improved the transportation system quite a bit throughout the county. Um, these photographs on this slide show some of the conditions of the corridors that we have improved since. Um, the first one here is the Southwest Wanamaker Corridor from 39th to 61st Street, and that was done in six different phases in 2006, 2007, 2008, 9, 10, and 11. And that total corridor um, was about $11.5 million, just over $11.5 million. The next uh, project, substantial project that was completed as part of the sales tax program was the city of Topeka um, had replaced the Topeka Boulevard Bridge. And that took uh, three years uh, to complete that project. Um, and the cost came in at just uh, $33,400,000. Now I will say the city back in 2011, we were anticipating that this would cost, I think in the around the $36 million range, Back in 2011, the city went and refunded the bonds 
uh, for this project, which I think saves, I'm estimating, I think it was like $2.8 million by doing that, by doing that. So that was a good move on the city's part uh, to refund those bonds and save a, save a good portion of money uh, in, in doing so. The next corridor was the Southeast Croker Road corridor from uh, 6th Street or US 40 down to Southeast 34th Street. Um, that was done in the years 2007 through 2009 and that cost was uh, $8.1 million. Now in addition to that, um, even though this wasn't sales tax funds, the county had used some of its uh, federal funds and local matching funds to uh, extend the corridor from that point at 31st down to 45th Street. So entire corridor from 6th Street down to 45th Street uh, has been improved uh, over that time frame. The next corridor, the city administered the project for Southwest 29th Street from Wanamaker uh, to Urish, and that construction was done in two phases from in 2010 and 2011. And the cost of that project was about uh, $10,666,000. Mm -hmm. Also, the city is administering the Southwest 21st Street corridor um, from the western city limits over by West Ridge Mall um, out towards Indian Hills. Um, that <coughs> corridor is still under uh, construction. They haven't done all the phases yet. They've completed uh, two phases in 2009 and 2013. They are just finishing up a third phase and be finished up uh, this year. And then the last phase from Urish to Indian Hills will be completed in 2016 at an estimated cost, when it's all said and done, of about $11.8 million. The county, uh, we are administering the corridor from Southeast 45th Street between South Pico Boulevard out to California. That is again in two phases. We completed the first phase last year in 2013, and we'll be finishing up that project this year um, in 2014, and the total cost for that corridor is uh, about $11.2 million. <coughs> and also this year, the county is administering the intersection um, up at Northwest 46 and Topeka Boulevard and we'll be converting that intersection, which was a traffic signal, into a roundabout at that intersection, and we've tied that one into, it's a different funding source, but into improvements at Northwest 46 Rochester. So that's, it's, a, it's all been bid as one project, but the financing for those two projects has been split into two, but that will be completed this year. Um, and that cost for that project is expected to be $2.4 Now these next, this next slide is going to just highlight a little bit um, successes as far as the Topeka Boulevard Bridge is concerned. And we have a little <coughs> video here we'd like to show you. Now you're probably wondering how we got this. I bet most of you didn't know that Tom Flanagan is actually a hot air balloonist. And we took <laughs> out his hot air balloon. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> show you the look on your face. Uh, look like, are you kidding me? But, but, uh, yeah, we took it out one weekend and flew over the Chicago yeah. Bridge. <laughs> Again, we've done 56 new county bridges um, at a cost of 18 million, and the county receives 1.5 million dollars per year to do uh, bridges out in the county, and we will have uh, we will have spent all that by the time it's all said and done. If our projections are correct, we are going to be within a couple thousand dollars of having 18 million put into the county bridges. And then in addition, as, as I mentioned before, in addition to the 56 bridges, there were 32 additional bridges that were done prior to, uh, prior to this current sales tax that was the part of the, the quarter cent sales tax. And in similar fashion to the Pico Boulevard Bridge flyover, this is a flyover of the Wanamaker Corridor that was recently
students in the sheriff out. There's some pretty fast drivers out there. <laughs> This is the 53rd and Wallmaker intersection here. Or was that 61st? I think I was was 61st. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. <coughs> also, some other successes that we've had. Um, the Cocoa, Cocoa Road corridor improvements, as I mentioned earlier. That took three years to complete. And then as far as the entire program, um, so far, since 2004, we've been, it's been generating, a, an, on average, about $14.7 million per year. If that average continues, we're looking at generating about $176 million um, over the 12 years, um, of which $5 million, as you know, uh, per year has been going for economic development purposes, or a total of $60 million. Uh, the Topeka Boulevard Bridge, um, $33 million, again, uh, it was originally anticipated to be closer to 36, but with the refunding of the bonds, that's been reduced nearly 3 million. And then as far as county bridges, uh, the 1.5 million per year are 18 million, which, which that will all have gone towards replacement of county bridges. And as far as our infrastructure projects, um, if current projections hold, their last <laughs> couple years ago, it looks like we'll be putting about $56 million into our roadway system. Um, and if everything holds, um, holds true to our current projections, I am uh, quite confident that uh, everything as part of this program will have been delivered um, within, within budget and on time. So we're, things have gone, in my, in my opinion, things have gone quite well. Um, you know, it sometimes can be a little challenging to project out 12 years, but, um, but um, I'm on, I'm on the JDL Finance Committee and along with uh, Ms. Greiner and as well as the City of Topeka's Public Works Director and the City of Topeka's uh, Finance uh, Director. And um, we, we've been administering the funds and it looks like uh, everything's going to come in just like what we had hoped and what they had projected back 12, 12 years ago. And just as a reminder, it's this program, you know, we still have two and a half years yet to go before it actually ends. Um, but it ends on December 31st, 2016. And with that, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to uh, try to address them. Questions or comments? Well, Mr. Chairman, I think that <coughs> Tom highlighted it at the end, but it does deserve repeating. The projects with the infrastructure have come in under budget or on budget, and I think that's a real remarkable attribute to the people that are administering it and watching our tax dollars at work. And when we look at the impact that this has had on our community, I think it's undeniable how much better we are off now than we were just a short time ago as it comes to safety and transportation. Yeah, I think, and I think that's a good point. I think, um, I think it'd be hard to argue that the community is not better as a result of this, uh, at least in my personal opinion. I think, I think a lot of people share that same opinion. Um, but I think it has been good if you look at all the improvements that have been made. And, and from a bridge standpoint, um, closing bridges is a very, very expensive venture for the economy. Mm -hmm. um, and our goal, and I think we've been fairly successful at it, is, is no news is good news. We haven't had a lot of, uh, you know, turmoil along the way. Um, so I think that's it's gone well. But with, with it, End of my little presentation, Would Betty. Oh, I'm sorry. I just, Tom, one question on, on uh, the Topeka Boulevard Bridge. We did have to incur debt. I mean, we issued bonds for that project, mm -hmm. correct? Yes, the, yes, the city did. All the other projects were done. They were spaced out then, the length of the sales tax. Yes, the roadway right. projects were, were spaced out and programmed so that when the revenues had come in and were received, then we proceeded with the, with the project. And there was some adjustment in bridges and roads as far as when they were finished, but we still um, were able then to move those around if needed, like on some of the bridges, if, if they were inspected and they were not performing well, then we were able to, to move up some of those bridges. Right. Same with some of the street projects, bridges correct? Can, the bridges will deteriorate at, a, at, a, at different, uh, varying rates, and 
I, I do know one thing. I knew, do know we have done, we've done more bridges than we originally had anticipated we'd be able to do. We were able, you know, we were able to get some good bids, and and allowed us to have additional funds to do, uh, to do more bridges. I, I can't remember how many more, it's maybe two or three more bridges than we anticipated. But, but um, since bridges do deteriorate at different rates, we may have had in our schedule a certain bridge to be done at a certain time. Well, some, something happened where it deteriorated very quickly, so we were able to shift it up and move it ahead of the schedule and maybe shift another bridge down in the schedule. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we did have that flexibility to do that, and we did do that um, if, we, if needed. So we have a pretty substantial bridge, which is out in the northwest portion of Shawnee County. Any thought? I know my file for that bridge has gotten pretty big, and we've been staying um, staying informed on what's going on with that bridge with inspection and everything, but some thought on financing for that? project well if 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 we if the I know there's discussion going on about possibly extending the sales tax program you know and and there's and there would be I'm not sure what the question the ballot question will end up being looking like but if it's if it's in there that there would be funds we would we would hope at least from our standpoint that we would be able to use some of the county bridge funds to go towards uh, towards the replacement of that. At the same time, hoping that maybe we could, um, you know, hopefully we could maybe get some federal funding. Which I don't know what the chances of that would be. To be honest with you, you know, if the things are in the economy that maybe that may be slim. Um, however, with the with the rating system, how it goes for for bridges. When a, when a bridge reaches, there's a, there's a rating system of what, zero to 100, <coughs> and when when a bridge is rated at an 80, it's eligible for federal. It's eligible for federal maintenance funds. When a bridge reaches a rating of 50 or below, it then becomes eligible for federal replacement funds. Uh, we are currently just doing. Or we have to do inspections for these bridges every two years, which we. We have a consultant to do for us, and they are in the process of doing that. But the Northwest Carlson Road Bridge over Ken's River, or the Willard Bridge, um, is going to have a rating of 50.7, which is about at that threshold. Mm -hmm. um, so my guess is probably a year from now, two years from now, it will be eligible. Again, the word eligible doesn't mean you get them. It means you're eligible for federal replacement funds. What that means, you know, I don't know. Does that mean we get any funds? I have no idea. But it means we're eligible and we could apply and, mm -hmm. and try to make the case. But my hope is, my hope is, you know, if 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 this sales tax were extended, that we would have at least a very good share for a local match and when you have a good share for a local match it makes your possibility of getting any federal funds that much greater because they like to see a lot of federal I mean a lot of local participation in programs like this because then they know that the, that the local community is really committed to the project mm -hmm. so. okay. um. You know, it's not very exciting to spend money on road and bridge, uh, but it's it's something we have to do, uh, and it's sad. But a lot of times, it takes a tragedy before anybody appreciates the work we do on infrastructure. And when a tragedy or something happens, uh, the community looks at the leaders and said, "Why didn't you anticipate this? Why didn't you do anything about it up front?" Uh, and so. It's, it's money we have to spend. We have to maintain our infrastructure. And uh, I think Shawnee County's done a good job of, of doing projects under budget, in time, and uh, I commend you and your staff for. But uh, you're, very, your you're very correct when you talk about infrastructure is no one notices it until it's not there. Right. And then it's extremely painful. Yeah. And we try to get out ahead of that, so then try to correct the issues in, in before it comes to that. Because the last thing you want to do is have to close a road section down or a bridge down and then start to do something about it. Because then, then you've got the planning and the design and all that takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. We've been, like the Carlson Road Bridge or the Kansas <coughs> River, the Willard Bridge, we, you know, we've been ha 
having discussions about this since 2008. So, right. so we know something's. But with that, I know uh, Betty here has some information on the financial part. Okay. okay. And I'm just going to look at the <coughs> kind of the big picture on the financial end. I'm not going to get into a lot of. Uh, details, but we've already gone over a lot of those. Uh, I'll start out by saying there is a JADO Finance Committee, as Tom mentioned. Uh, there are four people on that committee, two from the county, two from the city, uh, a financial and a public works representative from the county and from the city. The uh, leadership of that committee um, rotates back and forth between the city and the county, as does the uh, treasurer position for the uh, um, for the finances. And these numbers that I'm giving you are just purely estimates. As he mentioned, we have, you know, two and a half years left to go on these. So these are projected estimates. Um, the, the total um, sales tax receipts will, pro will be somewhere around $177 million um, totally. And that is broken down between the city and the county. The um, Finance Committee keeps track of the um, receipts and the disbursements by county and city. The, um, the JADO project it was designed so that the city receipts, sales tax receipts would cover their, the city projects, the county receipts would cover the county projects. Um, and so we do keep track of those separately and then, of course, Totally, and that is on the audits that are done each year. That information is given. So, of the 177 million that will come in, um, 82 million of that um, is anticipated that will be county funds. That's 46 percent of the total. Then, as he mentioned, 18 million of that will be spent on bridge projects. County infrastructure projects is estimated around 32 million. The um, economic development will be uh, around 27 million, and then there's you know expenses like the audit and that type of thing, which are, are uh, a very small per, uh, percentage, about 20 some thousand. So that kind of gives you a big picture of, of what money comes in and what money will go out. There again, I. Uh, as, as Tom mentioned also, we have two and a half years to go, so these are all estimates. Okay. Any questions? Questions or comments for Ben? I Commissioner? I don't have any, but oh, very, okay. very informative. Yeah, thank you. Next item, please. Item three, consent agenda. Questions or comments on the consent? <laughs> I have none. Move approval. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Bueller to approve the consent agenda as presented, seconded by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries three to zero. Next item, please. Item four, new business. A, County Clerk, number one, consider all voucher payments. Mr. Chairman, this morning we have vouchers totaling $711,641.28. Of that, the four main things that jump out are there was a purchase of a John Deere mower, and that was $193,000. Holding accounts, and those, by the way, that went off, so with the attachments to the mower, not just the mower. Um, but holding accounts for 39000 Blue Cross Blue Shield of 236526 mm -hmm. and our workers' compensation of 26000 That constitutes 60% of our overall expenditures, and I would move for approval of them. Second. Motion made to approve the vouchers as presented by Commissioner Cook and seconded by Commissioner Bueller. All in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries three to zero. Next item, please. I, number two, consider correction orders. I'll make a motion to approve the correction orders. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Archer, seconded by Commissioner Bueller to approve the correction orders. All in favor say aye. Both say no. Motion carries three to zero. Next item, please. Number three, public hearing for an economic development exemption for Big Heart Pet Brands, formerly known as Del Monte Food Corporation, 
Expansion 2, and consider approval of resolution number 2014-30, exempting Big Hearts Pet Brand Expansion 2 from ad valorem taxation for economic <coughs> development purposes. Good morning, Commissioners. Jim Crown, Assistant County Counselor. Uh, this is a public hearing on the proposed exemption resolution. Jim Green with Big Heart Pet Brands is also here to answer any questions you might have about the proposed exemption, and I'd be happy to answer any questions at this point. And we need a motion to open the yeah. public hearing. Also move to open the public hearing. A second. Motion made to open the public hearing by Commissioner Cook and seconded by Commissioner Bueller. All in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries three to zero. Are there any comments? Wow, it's quiet in here today. What's, what's up? <laughs> what's up? Um, and I guess the uh, next move is a motion to close the public <coughs> comment and approve the resolution. Then I will make a motion to close the public comment and approve the resolution. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Archer and seconded by Commissioner Bueller. All in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries three to zero. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Commissioners. Yes. Next item, please, Chris. Item B, planning. Number one, consider <coughs> approval of resolution number 2014-32, authorizing a conditional use permit to establish a communication tower on property located at 3838 Southeast 61st Street. Good morning, Commissioners. Barry Beagles, Shawnee County Planning Department. For you, as request as indicated by Howard and Carol Steenson, requesting a conditional use permit on behalf of wireless or Verizon Wireless seeking to erect a, a communication tower on their property at 3839 Southeast 61st Street. More specifically, the proposal would provide for the erection of a 150-foot monopole tower uh, within a 100-foot square leased area, which is located about the southeast corner of their 38-and-a-half acre parcel, which is about 1,100 or 1,200 feet south of 61st Street. The uh, tower would be designed to also accommodate two additional carriers in the future if uh, the opportunity presents itself. One of the things that's required by the communication tower regulations in Shawnee County is that the applicant had to investigate potential host sites to accommodate uh, the new tower. Uh, one is, is that they have to investigate uh, the possibility of co-location on any structure or tower within or in excess of 100 feet in height within a one mile radius of the subject property. Uh, they did that investigation, determined that there was no uh, co-location opportunities within a one mile radius. Then that turned to the second aspect of the study of potential host sites, and that is the examination of other properties that would potentially be suitable to accommodate the location of a new tower. As a result of that, there were six properties identified, including the Steensons property. The other five were rejected as not being as favorable with regard to elevation and other factors and, and settled on the Steenson property to accommodate uh, uh, their additional coverage needs. Uh, in this particular case, uh, we were able to uh, uh, provide for the tower's location at the back corner of the Steenson's property and create the greatest amount of separation with residential properties on Southeast 61st Street. This request did appear before the Planning Commission on April 14th. There was no opposition expressed at the meeting and no formal protest filed subsequent to the public hearing. The uh, Planning Commission did recommend that this uh, proposal be approved by a vote of six to zero, subject to the um, uh, conditions outlined in the resolution. Questions or comments? Are right, there anybody here? Uh, that's what I was wondering as well. well There's anyone in the audience? I have no questions. Uh, point of uh, information for the parliamentarian. Once there is a public hearing of the Planning Commission, does that close things as far as having comments on this now? It does not. Traditionally, we would then open it up for comments here. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Are there any, uh, anyone that wants to comment on this resolution? Okay. All right. I'd move for approval of the conditional use permit. Second. Motion made to approve by Commissioner Cook and seconded by Commissioner Bueller. All in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries three to zero. 
Next item, please. Item C, Audit Finance, number one, consider approval of resolution number 2014-31, adopting the Shawnee County stale check policy and establishing procedures for reissuance of Shawnee County checks. Betty Greiner, um, financial administrator. This is just an update um, to the stale check policy. This was a collaboration between the uh, the county clerk and her office, the treasurer, his office, and my office. Um, and what, uh, what it is changing, the main change is that we are eliminating the $10 fee for reissuing a check. Um, it costs us more <laughs> than $10 to process that $10 fee. And in, in many cases, uh, it's something that they had not received in the mail, so then we come back and ask to waive that and then have to pay them the ten dollars so you know it, it's we're just asking to eliminate that fee um, that will be more efficient in our processing and then we are also but you will still see these um, resolutions these reissued checks they will be on the consent agenda so okay. you will still see them okay. I ask for your approval um. I'll make a motion to approve and thank you for continuing to question why mm -hmm. uh, we do things uh, the way we do and, and so I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Archer, seconded by Commissioner Bueller to approve the resolution. All in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries three to zero. Thanks again, Betty. Next item, please. Item D, Health Agency, number one, mm -hmm. consider approval of request to fill an account clerk two position in the CHC billing office with a salary including benefits of $33,296.32 and to fill any subsequent positions that may become available as a result of filling this one. Good morning, Commissioners. Alice Weingartner, Shawnee County Health Agency. Um, as it's noted, the request before you is to fill a vacant position in our business office. Um, the position is vacant due to a transfer internally um, to another county department, and so we're looking to fill this position. Um, again, it's with billing. They maintain patient accounts. They work with patients in addressing billing issues. Um, they do their insurance billing to the various insurance companies that we work with, so it is a vital position for our operations, and I'd be happy to answer any other questions. Questions or comments for Alice? I don't. I would move for approval. A second. Motion made to approve by Commissioner Cook and seconded by Commissioner Bueller. All in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries three to zero. Thank, Thank you, you Alice. Next item, please. Item E, Human Resources, number one. Consider authorization and execution of contract C-181-2014 with AFSME Local 1294 for, a t for the 2014 year. Good morning, John Thumble, Human Resources. This is 2014 Memorandum of Understanding between AFSME and um, Shawnee County. Memorandum of Understanding covers about 84 employees. Um, yeah, <clears throat> the agreement modifies the way the employees can bid into a route, modifies how CDL physicals are scheduled, provides no scale change for 2014, and provides no step increases 2000 for 2014. I would like to thank Roger Re Levings, the AFSME representative, as well as Tom Block, uh, for working very diligently on this agreement. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Questions or comments for Mr. Thummel? I have none. Thank you. I'll move approval. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Bueller to approve the contract, seconded by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries three to zero. Next item, please. Number two, consider appointment of John Wellborn as interim weed director. Well, Commissioner John, again, this is a, um, a item appoints John Wellborn as interim weed department director, effective May 3rd, 2014. Salary will be $1,600 per pay period. This is an out-of-class out pay situation and will remain in full force and effect until further action by this body. Um, Mr. Wellborn is in the audience today. Um, he's been <coughs> he was on the job early this morning, and when I called down, he seemed to he was getting along really well this morning. Well, come on up here so people know. I mean, people know who you are, but let's let's get you up here. Why don't you come up to the podium? Oh. <laughs> yeah, the cameras are rolling. 
Well, I certainly appreciate the opportunity to work for Shawnee County in a different capacity. I've been here since 2005 uh, working for the county in a couple different positions and uh, have appreciated the time I've had with you and uh, I'm looking forward to my new adventure and, and uh, challenge. Good. So thank you. Thank you, John. Thank I'll you. make a motion to approve the appointment as presented. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Archer to approve, seconded by Commissioner Bueller. All in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries three to zero. Thank you, John. Next item, please. Item F, information technology number one. Consider approval of a request to advertise and fill a vacant assistant network administrator at a salary including benefits of $61,044.04 and any positions that may become vacant as a result of filling this position. Good morning, Commissioners. Pat O'Brien with the Information Technology Department. Uh, we are asking for permission to uh, fill a position that has recently been vacated uh, by our Assistant Network Administrator who's moving on to another position. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. I move for, I guess, to fill the position. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Cook and seconded by Commissioner Bueller. All in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries three to zero. Next no. item. Number two, consider authorization and execution of contract C-182-2014 with Alexander Open Systems for support of the EMC storage area network arrays at a cost of $26,131.62. Commissioners, this, uh, this item is maintenance contract for uh, two of the four storage arrays that we currently uh, maintain for the county. These are the arrays that store data for a variety of different servers throughout the county. Um, we do expect that this cost will be halved next year as a result of our virtualization initiative. Uh, it'll take us that amount of time to get everything moved off of these existing arrays. Uh, so uh, next year at this time, we hope to have this reduced by at least 50%. If you have any uh, other questions, I'd be happy to answer those. I'm writing that pledge down, by the way, <laughs> Pat. Remember, I said we hope to have <laughs> Not what I wrote. Okay. <laughs> Any questions or comments uh, for Mr. Oblander? Uh, just a comment that yes, sir. as we move forward on the virtualization, I think that we can start to see some of the savings and hope to see some of the savings from that project. I know that it was a, a very expensive venture, um, but mm -hmm when we have comments like this that our costs will be halved next year that we have that redundancy between the two i think it was well worth it so i'll move for approval of the contract with aos second yeah uh, it was expensive but absolutely necessary i think yes. that's that's something we need to and a better system and better yeah yeah much better yeah, system, yeah, much better yeah. system. Yeah. Uh, if, yeah. if we had not implemented the virtualization platform i would be coming back before you asking <laughs> for replacements of these yep. uh, mm -hmm. storage network arrays in another uh, format yep. but we would still be having to replace them regardless so yeah exactly uh, motion made by Commissioner Cook and seconded by Commissioner Bueller to approve the contract as presented. All in favor, <coughs> excuse me, say aye. Opposed, say no. Motion carries three to zero. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Commissioner. Appreciate it. Next item, please. Item G, Parks and Recreation, number one. Consider approval of request to pay invoice in an amount of $16,654.33 to Chevron Energy Solutions, who monitors the heating and cooling systems for the courthouse for energy savings. Uh, good morning, Commissioner. John Knight, Parks and Recreation. I'd be happy to answer any other questions you may have. This is a contract that's been in force for uh, several years. Uh, it's an annual payment, and they monitor um, the uh, courthouse and other county buildings for uh, efficiencies. Be happy to answer any other questions you may have. Um, I just asked John and how much in savings have we realized in that s oh, six um, years? Uh, about 1.8, almost 1.9 million dollars since the, since the, the contract was put in place. Yeah, this was a 10-year contract, I think, wasn't it, John? Um, 20. 20. 20. Okay. 20 years okay. Yeah. All right. I would move for approval of the uh, issuance of a payment of $16,654.33 to Chevron. Second. Motion made to pay our bill. Uh, 
by Commissioner Cook and seconded by Commissioner Bueller. All in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries three to zero. Next item, please, Chris. Number two, consider approval of resolution number 2014-33, issuing a Shawnee County <coughs> credit card for official business only for Clay Neal with a credit limit of $2,500. Uh, Commissioners, Clay Neal is our uh, community center director at the Garfield Community Center. He didn't have one before uh, because he didn't, uh, at that time, didn't need it. But since we've had so many staffing changes, uh, moving staff around, uh, uh, we, n we now have the need for Clay to have this to, to make some purchases. Um, over the last uh, several months, we've gone from 47 credit cards to 25. So uh, this is one that's important. I'd be happy to answer any other questions you may have. Questions or comments for Mr. Knight? I might just say, ask a question. He's agreed to all the checks and balances that we have in place and the issuance of that, correct? Signed. Okay. Yes. Move approval. Uh, and I'll second. Motion made by Commissioner Bueller and seconded by Commissioner Archer to approve the resolution. All in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries three to zero. Thank you, John. Next yeah. item, please. Item H, Sheriff's Office, number one. Consider authorization and execution of contract C-183-2014 with the City of Topeka detailing the use, governance, and maintenance of the New World System through 2018 with the City reimbursing the County for a portion of the costs. Good morning, Commissioners. Lance Royer with Sheriff's Office. Be happy to answer any questions. This is uh, basically a con agreement with the City of Topeka to reimburse us for maintenance of the New World System that they are using that's owned by the County. Questions or comments for the captain? I'll make a motion to approve the contract. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Archer, seconded by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries three to zero. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you, Lance. Next item, please. Number two, update on the emergency communications P25 radio system. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. How are we doing there? What I have before you is a culmination of a vote that was in uh, 2012, which was the enhancement and improvement of our uh, emergency and public service uh, communication system there. Go back uh, uh, to where that came from. We were operating, we, excuse me, uh, Herman Jones, Sheriff of Shawnee County. Make sure we get that on there. But anyway, uh, going back, from before the vote came from the, the Board of County Commissioner, uh, what, it, what it stemmed from was a radio system was pretty much antiquated, about 17 years old. And of that, about three years out of uh, repair or warranty, if you will, for uh, the uh, manufacturer. So we were basically on a, on a uh, shoestring of any repairs. Uh, so with that then uh, became the, the point where we need to upgrade to a P25 communication system, basically interoperability. It gives us a little more uh, uh, functionality to do things, not only just on a day-to-day, -day, but also for the emergencies when we're able to respond to certain things, uh, disasters and what have you, and, and also working with other agencies there. So from that then, um, from new towers, six different uh, sites that we've uh, been able to install, and also with about 15, about a little less than 1,600 new radios uh, for uh, public safety. And uh, when, that, when we're talking about that, we're talking about uh, not only the Sheriff's Office, but also the Topeka Police Department, Topeka Fire, Shawnee Fire, and uh, a lot of the uh, outline uh, law enforcement and some of the other uh, entities that come into play, such as Topeka Metro has benefited from this, this, uh, this new system, as well as solid waste, uh, parks and recs, so there are just basically uh, any entity in, in law enforcement or public safety or uh, government entity <coughs> that can, can benefit from that. <coughs> basically what we've done is we've started going live with the system. Uh, probably the first of April was when we started uh, with the system. It was uh, uh, Topeka Metro buses as well as salt waste. Uh, they started with a new system and a lot of that was kind of using them as our, as our test to make sure everything was working properly and kind of work through some of the kinks and bugs through that before we went with the public safety issue uh, agencies there. So after uh, we've got 
a lot of things worked out through that. We went with our agency. Our agency now has all the officers and it has a radio such as this, a portable, and uh, we're able to work through the new system as well as the old. Now, uh, the analog system and the digital system, we're working through that. All officers have a uh, communication through a portable and we're working to get the uh, radios installed in the vehicles, uh, or excuse me, in all the vehicles there, but that takes time. Uh, we've actually uh, been able to work with uh, Johnson County and their radio system uh, technicians to assist us uh, basically as a, as a reciprocal that when they come online and need something, we'll provide some services to them as well. So we're working through interagencies cooperation to get this done. Um, so by that then, as we move forward with installing new radios in the cars or the vehicles there, we're operating on our portables and what have you. So far we've had uh, I think we've had pretty good success with that. Um, uh, also, just some of the little things that we've worked through, just some of the kinks of something as simple as talking too loud or over-modulating into the uh, system that we have now. Uh, the analog, you could probably talk uh, at a great distance. This one you have to bring up, but you don't want to over-modulate because of the technology we have of digital uh, uh, communication there. Uh, as of this morning, at about 5 o'clock this morning, the Topeka Police Department has started with the transition of the new system there where their officers have a uh, digital uh, portable. Now, in that, because not all officers, not everyone has that system, we're still working on a dual system on the analog as well as the digital. So uh, our communication workers are monitoring both systems at the at present time. And that's just to ensure that we do have communication with everyone until we go complete live with everyone. And again, that's going to take a little bit simply because of the installation to the, uh, the vehicles. The police department has the largest fleet of all those that are out there, so that's going to take some time to get through there. We're working with both uh, Topeka Fire Department. They've been issued all handhelds as well. Uh, and as you can imagine, uh, trying to install a radio into an automobile can be kind of arduous. Imagine going into a big rig of a, sim of a, of a fire truck and trying to get in between all of that. So, uh, but we're working through uh, any issues that we may have, and I think we've been pretty successful with that, uh, at least when talking from Chief Bailey and some of the others out there. So, uh, we are transitioning. I think we hopefully by the, uh, I want to say by the end of the month, we will have everyone installed and going live with just about everyone. And again, the radios that we have, the older radios, will be transitioning out and going to some of the other uh, entities or government entities within Shawnee County to help them as well. I think uh, with uh, Director Cole, he'll, he'll be the recipient of some of those radio systems to help him in his, in his uh, agency as well. So open for any questions or any comments questions for the sheriff yeah. all right thank you sheriff thank you Again. thank you thanks uh next item please administrative okay. communications are there administrative communications this morning Rita Rookstool, good to be here and good to see all of you in, in action. I never had the opportunity or privilege to do that. I, last week I brought to the commission, and I'm sure your secretary, because she's so efficient, uh, maybe presented it to you, a packet uh, dealing with the water issue, and uh, there was another issue that I wanted to bring up at the um, open meeting that the city council had, but the mayor only limited us to three minutes. So, But I did provide you some information about that. It's a dilemma that uh, is specifically attributable to the county, and I'm talking about the solid waste issue, in the landfill up there, and there's a, a, um, a solution to that. So uh, uh, I'm not going to say a lot. I think it, <laughs> I learned more by listening. But if you all have some questions, uh, uh, if I can't answer it, I'll try to get the answer for you about any of the thing in the packet that I presented. Okay. I don't have any questions, right? Okay. I don't need it. I, uh -huh. I did see the package, but I haven't. Mm -hmm gone all the way through it, okay. but I, I'll sure give you a call if, if I do have questions. Okay, get your mic. I, I just yeah. appreciate getting the packet ahead of time. I mean, I think that helps. Yeah. I mean, 
Um, I think a lot of times we get so caught up and we get handed a packet and we don't really have time to digest it before the comments. And so I appreciate you dropping that off ahead of time. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank I, it's you. my understanding the City Council is going to be taking up the suggestions tomorrow evening. So Good. I guess That's it was good. time. Again, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, anyone else for administrative communications? Okay, next item then. Executive sessions. Is there a need? Councilman. Uh, I believe there is a need um, for purposes of um, consulting with legal, non-elected personnel, and real estate. Not to exceed 15 minutes. Okay, motion made to go into executive session um, to discuss non-elected personnel and real estate for a period not to exceed 15 minutes. Uh, in consultation with attorney. And what? In consultation with attorney. And consultation with attorney. Um, you check all the boxes. Or? Okay, uh, all in favor say aye, opposed say no. Motion carries <coughs> three to zero. No action anticipated. We are in executive session.
stay in, but I'm just going back and forth. So okay. it's only about a half hour from Rossville. It's not bad. <laughs> you know, it's about sure. It is. They buried it's a Mount yeah, Pilot. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're back in session. Uh, no action is required, and we are adjourned.